Hello there, everyone, and thanks for tuning in today. I'm not sure if this is your first time joining us for one of our Facebook events, but if it is, welcome. Welcome to everyone. I am Monica Williams. I'm with the USDA's Agricultural Research Service. So if you're curious about herbs and herbal gardening and you want to know how it can help with promoting a healthy gut, you're in the right place. We're going to be talking with Aaron Holden today, who is a technician and a medicinal herb expert and she's out at the U.S. National Arboretum, which is located in Washington, D.C. So we're going to take about 30 minutes or so and talk with Aaron and answer your questions. Aaron, can you share a little bit about yourself and tell people where you are right now? Yeah, so right now we are in the National Herb Garden, uh, the National Arboretum, and I'm standing in the culinary bed, um, and we're not standing in the medicinal bed, even though we're going to be talking about medicinal herbs because a lot of culinary herbs are used medicinally um, for gut health. And a little bit about me, I have a degree in herbal medicine that I got from the Maryland University of Integrative Health. Um, and after I graduated, I started an internship here in the National Herb Garden for about a year and a half and then moved over to the National Bonsai Museum for a little while. Um, and then recently, last year, came back to the National Herb Garden, um, which is my first love. So I'm really happy to be back, to be back here. Um, before we get started, I do want to put out a little medicinal disclaimer. Lots of herbs um, are generally pretty safe, and a lot of the herbs I'll talk about today are generally pretty safe, but they can interact with some medications, and people can have sort of idiosyncratic reactions to certain plants. Um, so if you're on any medications or you're thinking about trying something new you haven't tried before, definitely talk with your doctor or check in with an herbalist to make sure that there's not going to be any kind of complications. So what role do herbs play in maintaining a healthy gut? So herbs can play quite a few roles in maintaining a healthy gut. Um, there are a lot of different digestive issues like gas and bloating or diarrhea or um, maintaining a healthy gut biome and herbs can kind of help with each of those different aspects of gut health. It just depends on what exactly is going on with a person and what herbs are available. So I heard a lot of birds there chirping. They seem like they're pretty happy around there. <laughs> so it's a pretty birdie day today. <laughs> so um, what would be the top herbs to supplement more of the typical American diet? Let's see, that's kind of a broad question. Um, herbs can add a lot of flavor to food um, and they have a lot of different compounds in them like antioxidants and things that are anti-inflammatory that are just kind of general uh, good health boosters. Um, so I would say just kind of any extra herbs that you can throw into your food to enhance the flavor is also going to be kind of a general health enhancing because you're getting all those kind of interesting plant compounds in your diet and, and that's a good thing. So here's a question. Are herbs probiotics or prebiotics? What's the difference? Yeah, so a uh, probiotic is basically good gut bacteria. We all have a gut microbiome and there are healthy microbes that live in our gut and then there are not so healthy ones that can kind of take over and make us feel sick. And so when you're taking a probiotic, you're actually supplementing good bacteria into your gut. Um, and prebiotics are food that those healthy gut bacteria feed on. And herbs can play a role in feeding those healthy gut bacteria. Something like chicory contains inulin and that is food for those good gut bacteria. So inulin would be a prebiotic. Okay, so I see there's a lot behind you. Can you tell us um, what is that? What is behind you right now? Yeah, so this big guy here is a bay laurel. And this is probably familiar to a lot of people when you get, um, you can buy bay leaves in your spice section at the grocery store. It's a little jar of these dried leaves. You usually stick a couple in your stew and simmer them for, you know, however long you're cooking your stew for and then take them back out. Um, this is what that plant looks like in real life. It's a really big, happy one. Um, and right here is one of my favorite plants. This is rosemary. It smells amazing. Um, it's really good in a tea. A little bit goes a long way. Um, and it's really good for um, stimulating circulation out to the periphery, like to the fingers and toes and things like that to kind of warm you up in the wintertime. 
And then over here we have pineapple sage, which is flowering right now. And it's called pineapple sage because when you crush the leaves, it smells um, really strongly of pineapple. It smells really nice. Um, that also makes a really good tea. And if you chop it up really fine, it's really good in a fruit salad. Okay. Is there a certain time of year that we should grow herbs? Does it matter what season? So typically um, here in the herb garden, um, our growing season is from April-ish and May till about now, till about October. Um, and usually we get our seeds started in a greenhouse sometime in late winter to early spring, so like February, March-ish. And we get things germinated and they start growing and then we start planting everything out, usually um, early May into June. And so our growing season is kind of long, um, but it depends on what part of the country you live in. So people in Alaska, their growing season is going to be a lot shorter, and so they're not going to be putting things outside until much later in the year, and then having to bring them back in or starting over uh, much sooner. So. Okay, so here's a question. My husband sometimes suffers from indigestion. Is there an herb that can help make digestion process smoother? Yeah, so um, the indigestion can be quite a few things. Um, it can include you know, gas and bloating and reflux and things like that. And a good um, general category of herbs that help with indigestion, um, they're called bitters. And lots of plants fall into this category of bitters, but they all sort of act on the body in the same way. They help, to, um, they help the body to start secreting and producing more digestive juices. So more saliva, more stomach acid, more digestive enzymes getting secreted into the small intestine. Um, and one of the, like the archetypal bitters is gentian. It's one of the, it's the bitter. <laughs> it's really kind of nasty tasting. Um, and so plants go from all the way from that end to not quite so bitter, like fennel, which if people are really familiar with fennel, they know that it's kind of sweet tasting, um, but it still has the same actions on the body. And this is what fennel looks like. It gets to be a tall plant about yay high. Um, and if you look here, you can actually see the fennel seeds. I can pull those out for you, these little guys here. Um, and these are actually the fruits, but they're called seeds. Um, so this is a, a bit more palatable way for people to take bitters to help with things like indigestion and gas. Okay, here is another question for you. I was told or read that lavender is good for calming an upset stomach, but I also heard that there's only a certain part of the lavender flower that you should use. Can you explain? Yeah, so lavender is really good for what's called nervous gut. So if you get really stressed out about stuff and it shows up in your stomach, when you get nervous, your stomach feels all tight and crampy. Um, lavender is really good at relaxing those gut muscles and calming them out, um, calming them down. And it also works on the nervous system as an overall kind of relaxant to the body. So it works kind of all over in both ways to help calm an upset stomach or a nervous gut. And I got a little lavender flower here for you. Um, it's not quite lavender season. Uh, we're a little bit past that, but I was lucky to find this one. Um, and it's these little purple buds. They're not quite open right now, um, but it's these really darker purple um, uh, flowers is what you use. Um, and this is what you would make your medicine out of your tea or your tincture. What are a couple easy ways to begin using herbs to help your gut? So a few easy ways to incorporate herbs to um, help a healthy gut. Um, one of the, uh, the easiest things to use is peppermint. And I have a peppermint plant right here. This is actually a chocolate peppermint. I can break off a little piece. Um, I wish you guys could smell it because it smells amazing. So that's what peppermint looks like and it's really easy to grow so you can grow your own or you can get it um, as a pre-packaged tea at the grocery store um, so peppermint chamomile um, which you can also get really easily and ginger which is over here so this is the ginger plant it's nice and happy right now um, and it's the rhizome that's used that's underground right now so you can't see it um, but you can get like a big uh, chunk of it in the produce section and chop that up and simmer it in some water for 
10 or 15 minutes. Um, and the chamomile and peppermint, you wanna use a couple tea bags and you also wanna steep that for 10 or 15 minutes to make sure that the water can get all those good constituents out. Um, so those will help settle an upset stomach and they're really easily accessible at any kind of grocery store. Okay, so someone's saying, I've seen commercials about turmeric. What properties are in turmeric that help inflammation? Yeah, so um, turmeric, um, which is this plant right here, you can kind of see the, the big leafy thing behind this tall spindly one. This is turmeric and it's the rhizome that we use, very similar to the ginger. Um, and it contains curcumin and that's what gives it, one, it's anti-inflammatory properties and also it's what um, gives it its orangish yellow color, that really vibrant turmeric color. Um, in addition to being anti-inflammatory, curcumin also kind of helps stimulate bile flow and bile helps to break down fats. So it kind of pulls double duty here as well. A lot of herbs have more than one action. Um, so not only does it help with inflammation, but it can also help you digest your fats. Okay, so there's different types of herb forms. Is there one that's better than the other? So that really depends. Um, there are a few different things to consider when talking about uh, what form of herb you want to take. Uh, a really common form is taking a tea. Um, and teas are useful if the compounds you're wanting from a plant are water soluble. Um, they're also um, really convenient for people, like you can often just go to the grocery store and get a tea um, to make and prepare. They're inexpensive. Um, but sometimes they're not really what you're looking for. Sometimes the constituents you want from a plant are alcohol soluble and they're, you can make a tea all day long and you're not gonna get what you want from it. And so in that way you have to make a tincture which is an alcoholic extract. Um, and tinctures are great because they're a little more portable than a tea. You can just kind of throw them in your bag and take them with you. Um, they act a little more quickly on the body, um, but they tend to be more expensive and they tend to taste a lot worse. <laughs> And they also contain alcohol, and a lot of people um, might be avoiding alcohol for whatever reason. So there are a lot of things to consider when picking out what form to take your herbs in. Okay. Um, here's another question you may have touched on earlier. Can herbs help with the digestive, digestive problems such as GERD? Yeah, so um, there are some plants that can help with things like uh, acid reflux or, or, or GERD. Um, things like meadowsweet or licorice or marshmallow, things that are going to kind of um, help with the overproduction of acid, kind of help soothe, um, um, just kind of soothe the gut. Uh, marshmallow is very, it's called demulcent, so it, it's very soothing to tissues and kind of helps to control that acid reflux a little bit. Um, but again, things like licorice, you want to make sure that you're not on certain medications before you take that. Okay, here's another question for you, Erin. I heard that adding aloe leaf to hot tea is a good way to eliminate waste in your bowels. Is this true? So aloe actually has a couple of different actions and it depends on what part of the plant you're referring to. So I have an aloe leaf here and I'll just cut this open. And uh, you can see, see the nice like gooey <laughs> gel that's on the inside of this leaf. Um, and so this gel um, is really kind of demulcent, like I said, very soothing to the skin. That's why it's in a lot of sunburn lotions and gels. Um, and you can also find it in the grocery store um, as a drink and it's mixed with water and things like that. And it's very kind of soothing internally. Aloe, though, when you cut it, will also exude a latex, and that latex acts as um, what's called an osmotic and stimulating laxative. And so basically what that means is it pulls a lot of water into the large intestine, and um, it actually stimulates contractions of the muscles in the gut. And so it can cause a lot of abdominal cramping and watery diarrhea. So it, it, so, 
And that way, it is a laxative and it will help eliminate waste from the bowels, but it is definitely not my first choice or my second choice in terms of trying to get the bowels moving. Um, I would probably go with something a little more gentle the first go around, something like maybe Senna, maybe I would actually start with Dandelion to see if I could get things moving that way. So. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, my grandmother used to use aloe leaf on my scrapes when I was a little girl, but I'll make sure I'll just stick to that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you did speak about lavender, and this person's asking, um, can you use lavender for soothing nausea? I know you mentioned peppermint, but can you use lavender? So lavender is not necessarily my first choice um, when it would come to nausea. Um, but again, it depends on, I guess, what's causing the nausea. If, um, if you're nauseous because you're nervous, I still might use peppermint or chamomile, but throw a little bit of lavender in there to kind of help with that nervous gut. But the, I think the peppermint and the chamomile are going to help with the nausea initially. And then the lavender will just kind of help calm things out in general. Okay, so here's another question. This one has to do with pets. Are there any beneficial herbs for pets, my dog or my cat, for gut health? Yeah, so you can definitely use herbs for um, helping your pets with digestive issues, but you have to be really careful, especially um, in terms of dosage, because dogs and cats are a lot smaller than people, so they don't need quite as much. And you have to be especially careful with cats because they have kind of a much different metabolism than humans or dogs. And so herbs that might be safe for them are not safe for cats. So you really kind of have to know the plant and know what you're doing. Um, so I don't necessarily recommend people just kind of jumping in to using herbs with their pets without kind of experimenting on themselves first and doing a little more research. Um, but I've definitely used herbs to help my own dogs with like, things like diarrhea or urinary tract infections and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, how can I get started growing herb plants? What's the easiest herb to grow? Let's see, so a really easy herb to grow. I keep pointing to peppermint here. It's a really great beginner herb. Um, it's easy to establish. It just kind of will take over a garden if you're not careful. And so it's, it's kind of like a beginner herb, but I, if you want to plant it, I would definitely recommend putting it in a pot and not necessarily in the ground because the pot will keep it from just kind of going all over the place and, and kind of keep it contained. Um, in terms of getting started growing plants, um, it really depends on what zone you live in. So plants that grow really well here in DC are not necessarily going to work in Texas or Wisconsin. So you need to know what hardiness zone that you're in, um, how cold it's going to get where you live. And it's really easy to go online and look that stuff up. Um, Wintergreen Botanicals uh, website has a really great chart that lists the, the hardiness zones and what plants will grow well there and then also the medicinal properties of those plants. So I would definitely check out that resource if you're interested. Okay, so we've got time for a couple more questions. Um, and you did just mention that website. Do you have other resources that people can go to to learn more about herbs and digestion? Yeah, so the... Um, the American Herbalist Guild is a really great resource. Um, they have uh, webinars that are free to the public or you can become a member. Um, and the Herb Society of America website and blog is also a really great resource. Um, and it's really approachable. Um, they have a lot of, you can become a member of them as well, or they have a lot of free stuff available to the public. And um, it's, a, it's more geared to the layperson. So if you're um, there's not a lot of like medicinal jargon or anything like that. It's really approachable and kind of easy to um, easy ways to kind of incorporate herbs into your life. Um, and then if you just kind of search for like digestive issues or whatever, any kind of pertinent information will come up. Okay. So uh, I know there's a lot of activities and events at the National Arboretum that the public can enjoy. Do you all offer tours or classes at the National Herb Garden? So in a normal year, yes, <laughs> um, and we haven't quite gotten back to normal yet, um, but we do provide tours. All you need to do is contact the National Arboretum or the National Herb Garden. Just go onto our website and you can find out how to do that. 
Um, and we can tailor tours to your group if it's a, like a college group that's interested in medicinal plants or more like historical uses of herbs. Um, we've done things like that. Um, so you would just contact us. <clears throat> we've also um, given herb classes um, through our Urban Lifestyles educational series. Um, that's been put on hold for a little bit, um, but when we had that going, we would have different speakers come in and talk about how to like dye fabrics with different plants or make herbal infused salves and things like that. Um, so we're hoping to get that back up and running in the future. Okay, that's great to know. So Erin, what is your favorite or your top two favorite herbs? Hmm, so let's see here. <laughs> that's a really hard question. Um, but one of my favorite herbs is Gotu Cola or Centella Asiatica. And it's kind of a low growing ground cover. And it's really good for like uh, connective tissue and epidermal tissue and things like that. So it's good for like hair and skin and nails and um, you know, tissue repair, so gut repair as well. Um, another one of my favorite plants is Ashwagandha or Withania somnifera, um, which is a nightshade, which is one of my favorite plant family. So that's a bonus. Um, and that's what's called an adaptogen. So it helps the body to deal with like chemical stressors, emotional stress, physical stress, that sort of thing. Um, it's a really nourishing and building plant. So that's another one of my favorites. Okay. Well, thank you, Erin. This has been very informative. I've learned a lot. So thanks for coming to visit the National Herb Garden and letting me talk to you guys about herbs for gut health. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, thank you, Erin. Thank you to everyone who's joined us. Um, we really appreciate the information you provided to us about promoting a healthier gut. Thanks to everyone for watching and sending in your questions both in advance on our social media platforms and during today's chat. If you still have questions, you can continue to add them to the chat. We'll be posting all of the question and answers on our website where you can find this and some of our other Facebook events. Just visit www.ars.usda.gov. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.